All right, really interesting question here, which I'm sure we'll have a bit of discussion about. I'm sure. So, read something like this. I like the name Ikea God, by the way. <laughs> um, seeing DLSS being more and more used in games was my decision going for a 5700 XT instead of a 2070 Super a bad idea? Um, pretty. I think to, to answer the question, basically, if you've got the 5700 XT and you haven't had any driver or problems, which some people had, and it's performed as advertised and i think already you haven't made a bad decision because the 5700 xt was a hundred dollars less um for that generation where it was rdna versus turing the 5700 xt represented exceptionally good value fantastic performance at 400 dollars and as far as i can tell it's only gotten better relative to the 2070 super over time like if you take like a 30 game sample for example there's a lot of games now where they're like it's faster or as fast which is quite remarkable yep. so it only appears to me that it's improved in terms of performance over time for for you know rasterization performance obviously but you know dlss is growing in support there are more games that do support it now and it does make you know can make quite a substantial difference to performance with comparable image quality let's say because yep. no need to get into that so it's again difficult to call now because you could make you can make or you could sort of evaluate this and ask this question again in a year when you know hopefully AMD has their alternative, and depending on how that plays out, it could change it entirely. But I think yeah, I would just summarize this by saying the fifty seven hundred XT. If you bought it when it came out, you've had it for quite a while now. Um, you saved a hundred dollars US, which is not insignificant, and really the fifty seven hundred XT plays at a pretty impressive level in all of the games today i think that with this question it really comes down to when you bought into this generation because if you bought right at the start when the 5700 xt and 2070 super came out mm -hmm. then for a lot of that first year or even 18 months of those cards being available dlss wasn't as impressive of a feature oh, because the, the game support wasn't there mm -hmm. so if you bought right at the start then you would have had 18 months of Effectively, just buying the better card for rasterization and it being cheaper. Well, the better well, value, the better value card, card yeah. for, for um, in terms of this comparison. And I think we should just say that if inverse this, if you bought a twenty seventy super, I don't think you should be disappointed either. No, that's right. It's for five hundred dollars. That you know, although it came later in the game, I don't think much later. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I think they were around the same time because okay. the there was twenty seventy was already on the market, but the fifty seven hundred right. XT yeah. launched around the same time as the supers. So I should just kept with my original yep. train of thought, which is if you bought either of these, you know, they're good value cards and they they, they have their str um, strengths and weaknesses, but there's no right or wrong option between the two is how I yeah. would put that. And I think it depends as well how often you, you're an upgrade. Like if you yep. upgrade every two years and you bought right at the start of the generation, then you basically missed DLSS being relevant for that card. And now you'd be buying, you know, a 30 series GPU or a six... 6,000 series GPU from AMD if, mm -hmm. and of course you'd have to then reevaluate DLSS being important to you. So yeah, I guess there's there's a lot of angles to this. I would say if you bought a 5700 XT right at the end of that generation, it's probably a bit different because, you know, while the card is still superior value, you're probably going to be keeping it for the next, you know, two, three years. And then DLSS becomes a much more significant thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could feel that you'd missed out a bit there, but then Again, we've been talking a lot about the price difference, which, again, that comes into a factor. And certainly if those two products were the same price, then this argument would be very, very different. That $100 difference makes... It completely changes this discussion yeah. a lot. It, it wouldn't have been appropriate for them to be the same price. So, yep. yeah, um, it, it's a very difficult one. At the end of the day, you bought a graphics card. So, you know, if you had have waited <laughs> for this generation, uh, you may have regretted that. So... Yeah, hopefully you bought it pretty early on and you've been enjoying it, playing a lot of games. And in my opinion, there's a lot of value just in that. Yeah, exactly. It's it's always with these discussions like, oh, should I upgrade this or, or should I wait for an upgrade? It's always about like, you can't just factor in what performance you're going to get in the future. It's also about what did you get at the time, the time before you choose to upgrade? Like having a faster GPU for an additional year could be worth more to you than having a slower GPU and then waiting a year upgrading to something better yeah so all that stuff needs to be factored in it i guess it just depends from person to person yeah at this point in time dlss is a significant factor now it's making it difficult to recommend 
AMD GPUs, especially at a similar price point. That's right. So it, it needs to be another situation like this where, you know, obviously MSRP pricing isn't really a thing, but you know, sixty seven hundred XT versus I think if seventy, we've it, talked about that a lot with that market. Yeah, if, if these two products were available today at a similar type deal, there's a hundred dollar difference. DLSS would be a heavy thing pushing you to pay the premium. Yep. But at the same time, $100 on a $400 versus $500 product is quite a large saving and you can put that money towards a future upgrade. So you'd yeah. have to evaluate all of that and work it out for yourself what you want to do with your money. Yeah, I mean, you'd be looking at it being, what, 20% more expensive? Are you getting, on average in the games that you play, like 20% more performance? I guess it would come down to how many DLSS titles that... Mm-hmm. you know you play i mean dlss support is definitely getting better but there's still a lot of people out there that may not encounter as many dlss games in yep. the selection of things that they're playing so 